Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Bayard, the Tier 7 French Premium Cruiser that was just released today. Now, the Bayard is a French light cruiser, and boy is it a light cruiser. If you look at the bottom left of your screen, you will notice that this cruiser does not have access to a repair party, so any damage you take will be permanent. This is also a reason why I decided to use Defensive AA instead of the Sonar Consumable because with the frequent carriers in your Tier 7 matches, you will most likely be spotted over islands that you are trying to use to lob battleships or really any ship to try and conserve your health pool. This ship has 25mm of plating pretty much everywhere except the essentially citadel plating on the outer part of the hull which is basically at the waterline everywhere else is simply overmatchable by any 380 millimeter guns or higher which is very common at tier 7 the Bayard has 12 152 millimeter guns with a seven and a half second base reload using the main battery reload mod in that fourth slot you are able to get your reload down to 6.6 .6 seconds and if you use your reload booster it then becomes 3.3 seconds which will make your cruiser have the highest he dpm and highest fire starting chance at tier 7. the bayard also has one fifth pen on the main guns so you are able to pen 29 millimeters of armor which is effectively all the heavy and light cruisers at the tier, and even the hulls of lower tier battleships. The Bayard is definitely a glass cannon, and you will be punished for mistakes. Essentially, what you want to be doing in the ship is what I'm doing right here, using any island possible, and just shooting over it and never getting spotted. Fortunately, the enemy Saipan is actually focusing the other side of the map, so I don't have to worry about getting spotted. I'm also really fortunate that this enemy Flandre is pretty much AFK, so I can just go out and start farming. I use my reload booster to try and set as many fires on this enemy Flandre to try and get him as low as possible before he gets back, reconnects, starts playing whatever it is that stopped him from playing. As soon as he starts getting shot at, he does start moving, so I guess he was there, he just simply wasn't playing. The enemy black accidentally left his smoke and ended up getting spotted. We do hit him and reset the cap, however now we are spotted by smoke firing penalty and there is an enemy Suzuya plane still flying around. I pop my defensive AA in order to try and kill it as quickly as possible. And right now, I do wish I still had my sonar instead of defensive AA, mainly because, well, there are black torps that are extremely stealthy. Luckily, he had launched widespreads, and I am actually able to sur survive sailing pretty much full broadside to him. I keep pushing in, and the black does panic and try to leave his smoke, and I do end up spotting him. The black shooting his main guns means that he is not going to go unspotted. Our friendly Udachi has sailed around the outside of the cap and is helping us out with that enemy Flandre. Considering the Flandre has 380mm guns, we do not want to let him get any sort of shot at us. So as soon as he starts getting towards the corner, we start accelerating and take our final shots at the enemy black. The enemy Flandre shoots, but he does end up missing and we are able to pick up the black. Now with this enemy Flandre pushing in, we definitely do not want to stick around very long. The enemy Iowa from the other flank is also heading this way, so we do start turning out. I hope that our friendly teammates can deal with the enemy Flandre in the cap before he has any sort of chance to aim and fire his main guns at us. I try to take a pot shot at the Iowa before I get around the island and unfortunately the shells land short in the water. Our friendly Yudachi is using his reload booster against this Iowa who is simply sailing in a straight line waiting for me to shoot. 
I do start shooting to try and get the Iowa distracted in terms of trying to aim and shoot at me. And then he will not see the Yudachi Torps coming. He shoots his main guns and he does catch all of those Yudachi Torps and he ends up getting Deathstruck. Turning out to dodge the Iowa Salvo actually makes us go broadside to this enemy Flandre. However, he had his turrets pointed backwards, supposedly towards where the Udachi was. And our teammates are able to pick up the kill. Now, with two caps and basically the entire enemy team dead, all we can really do now is just try to head to the other flank as quickly as we can. Our engine boost does come off of cooldown, and this is a French engine boost that gives a 20% speed bonus. So we can start heading to the other side with a top speed around 44 knots, which is extremely fast and I'd say pretty typical for a French cruiser. Since buying this ship, I have played about 10 games, and since I am not a CC, I did have to spend my own money and use doubloons in order to get it. 17,500 doubloons is a pretty steep price. So I guess the question is, is the Bayard worth it? Now ultimately, what you do with your doubloons and your money is entirely up to you. And I will basically just give you my two cents and you can do whatever you want with this information. So basically, the gimmick that you are buying the Bayard for is the highest DPM highest HE DPM at tier 7 for the duration of your main battery reload boosters. So in total that is 60 seconds worth of HE DPM in the entire game. This is a ship where your main playstyle would be to sit behind an island and try your best to farm from it. Your ship is extremely squishy so being spotted and getting shot at by battleships will definitely chunk you for a whole lot of your HP and essentially any mistakes will be severely punished. There is not a whole lot of wiggle room in terms of survivability and essentially recovering from those mistakes because this ship does not have a repair party. Outside of the Bayard's main battery reload booster, the next highest HE DPM would be from the Suzuya and then followed by ships like Cleveland and Mainz. And all of those ships are extremely good at farming damage. And on top of all of that, ships like Cleveland have a radar. Mainz has extremely good sonar, 37 millimeters of pen, excellent AP. Basically all of these ships that I've just listed can do what the Bayard can except for one minute duration of a match when the Bayard uses its three main battery reload boosters. I should also mention that those ships have heals, whereas Bayard does not, which at tier 7 is a huge benefit. If the Bayard did have a heal, I think it definitely would be one of the better ships at the tier, and definitely be competing at the top of the tier 7 cruiser list. But without the repair party, it does fall short and ends up closer to the middle and the bottom at least in my opinion. On PC, the gimmick of the Bayard is the same, the highest HE DPM when you use your main battery reload booster. However, all of the, I should say not all, but most of the other cruisers at the same tier don't actually have a repair party. So the playing field is a lot more balanced. And the gimmick of having the highest HE DPM for the duration of your main battery reload boosters is actually a huge gimmick that can essentially win you a lot of gunfights but in this game having a repair party does make an extremely huge difference compared to not having it especially at tier 7 so i guess ultimately if this ship did have a repair party instead of the sonar then this ship would get my recommendation but as of right now having no repair party, being extremely squishy, and basically being a glass cannon. This ship being difficult to play, it just simply doesn't get my recommendation because there are other ships that can do what the Bayard can. 
but with a lot more sustainability in those repair parties. Again, ultimately it's up to you what you do with your doubloons and your money. I actually had to spend my own 17,500 doubloons, so this is essentially what I'm thinking, and with the ships that could essentially do what the Bayard can, it just didn't seem like something that was a necessary purchase. Now, is this ship fun? I'd say the ship was fun for a couple of games, but having to be so careful with your HP pool and your positioning, having to be so diligent every single game, because if you're not careful, then you basically get dev struck and having to be so diligent every single game it did get exhausting pretty quickly again I can't emphasize enough the fact that you do what you want with your own money and your own doubloons but yeah that's pretty much my two cents take what you want from it or leave it um, in this game, I was able to do 133,000 damage and 3,200 base XP. The commander I was using was Andre Le Monnier. I ended up using an anti-air build. Here I'm using Beyond Range in the first row. You could switch it to the AA skill in order to get a little more AA. But ultimately, what I was trying to do is build enough AA range that when I use the defensive AA consumable I do shred any carrier planes that are spotting me because any damage that happens to me is permanent without a repair party. 6.8 kilometer air detectability and without that AA mod sorry the first row AA skill you have six and a half with the skill it does go out to 6.8 here we're looking at the main battery reload booster 50% for 20 seconds. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more, or leave a comment down below for any other ships you want to see in the future. But until next time, aloha.